I have been using the Canon EOS R8 for both videos and photography for several days now. I took several thousand pictures with it. And since I often get asked which settings I use, I wanted to show you how I set up this specific camera, mainly for bird photography, but also for other type of wildlife. And then I will also show you a second type of settings that I save on the camera that is more targeted for non-moving objects like landscapes, maybe some flowers that you take pictures of and so on. Before we start, I just want to mention that this is kind of my uh, configuration of the camera with the button customizations and the wheels and everything that works well for me. It might not be ideal for you, but I think it should give you a good starting point and some ideas how you can set up your camera for nature photography. I just performed a factory reset of the camera, so everything should look quite similar if you take your camera out of the box. So the first thing I want to do is switch into the manual mode because I use this most often for wildlife photography. Let's jump straight into the menu. And the first thing I want to change is the image quality. Right now, as you can see, it's set to large JPEG. However, I prefer to shoot raw because it gives me more possibilities with editing the pictures, bit better image quality and so on. However, I need to say the buffer size of this camera is not huge, especially if you shoot with 40 frames per second. So I made quite good experiences with uh, using zero. I didn't see a, really a noticeable difference in image quality on any Canon camera so far. So I will use zero and I turn off the JPEG. I will just mention the settings that I think are important and I changed. So there's nothing else on this page. So let's skip to the second tab. Here we have the ISO speed settings. This is certainly more important if you shoot with automatic ISO. I usually shoot full manual, so I set my ISO as well to some settings. For now, just let, let's put it at 1600. But here you can define like the range in which the camera should set the ISO. And with the minimum shutter speed setting, you basically tell the camera what is the lowest shutter speed that it should reach before it starts increasing the ISO. This is only important if you shoot in AV or in P mode. Otherwise, there is nothing here I would change. I would uh, keep all the other settings on off because some of them, like the auto lightning optimizer, they're not really affecting our RAW files, only the JPEGs, but they can slow down the camera and we don't want that for bird uh, shooting. Also, the anti-flicker shooting is something that's only relevant if we shoot indoors with different light sources and so on. Um, I will also keep the metering mode to the evaluative metering. The white balance is something that I prefer to set manually just because for me the um, automatic white balance is sometimes a bit too jumpy and it's easier for me in the editing to change the white balance of many shots if they have all the same value. So I would say 95% of the time I use daylight, sometimes times the cloudy settings, but let's put it to daylight for now. The color space is something where maybe you have heard with Adobe RGB, you have um, a bigger color space, so more color options. However, this is only important if you shoot JPEG for RAW, it really doesn't matter, so I just leave it like this. And the picture style is also something I prefer to set myself. I usually use standard, which gives me a nice idea of how the image could look like in the end. There is also the option to set something like neutral or faithful and dial everything to the minimum. Then you will have an image that looks very flat, kind of grayish, but it shows a bit better how much like possibilities there are in the raw file, like how much detail is still in the shadows and in the highlights. However, for me, I'm quite used to using the standard. It's a bit of a nicer look if I look at the screen, but this is something you need to figure out for yourself. So the first item in the next tab is the lens corrections. I would turn everything off here because they sometimes uh, tend to slow down the camera, which is again something we really don't want. Um, the high ISO noise reduction um, is also only important if you shoot JPEG. In RAW it doesn't matter, um, just your result will look a bit more uh, grainy or noisy on the back of your screen, but the RAW file is not affected. So I put this to off because again it helps to make the camera a bit faster. I will skip the next tab, this is not really relevant for me right now. The drive mode for birds, I would always put it in, um, in continuous drive so that you can take a burst of shots. 
Personally, I prefer to have it in the highest settings. If this is resulting in too many images for you, you might consider one a bit slower. I have set the shutter mode to the electronic shutter for several reasons. First of all, not making any noise. Second, I'm 100% sure that this cannot give any vibration. And third, and most importantly, it's much faster. So in the first electronic curtain, you get around 6 frames per second with this camera. In the electronic shutter, up to 40 frames per second, which is just crazy if you shoot action. There can be some rolling shutter. However, the sensor of the R8 is the same as the R6 Mark II, and it has a quite fast readout speed, so I'm not too worried about rolling shutter, to be honest. But again, it might depend a bit of what kind of birds or other wildlife you are shooting. The next point, release shutter without card. I would really disable this because if you don't have a card in the camera, you don't want that the camera pretends like it's shooting. It should really not take a single picture in my opinion. Uh, this IS mode, you might not even see it depending on which lens you have on your camera. If you have a lens that has an image stabilizer and an image stabilization switch, then this um, menu will not even, this menu item will not be here. The image review I would also turn off because if I take a picture, I, what I want to see after is still a live feed of how the bird is moving and not uh, seeing the picture I just took. If I want to see it, I can just press the play button. Um, here I am quickly checking the shooting information display. I mean, here it's completely up to you. You can modify the screens, you can disable some. If you say you never use the blank one, you can just take it out here with the tick. This is up to you. Um, what I like to have is the histogram, but a bit smaller because the large one is really too distracting for me. So I change this and I want that I only see the focus distance in the manual focus mode. Otherwise it's for me too distracting, but I like to see the uh, focal length, so how many millimeters am I using. This is particularly useful for me if I'm with a zoom lens to know how much I can still zoom, even more important in video than in photography. Finally, I will um, increase the display performance. This might drain more battery, but it will also help to track birds a bit easier, so that's more important for me. And here the movie settings, they are just important if you quickly record a movie with this button. If you change it to video mode, you have a whole other range of settings. This is really a strength of the R8 in my opinion. So here I just put it to 4K60 and leave the rest because I think I've never used it so far. Let's get to a very big topic, the autofocus. So first here for moving subjects, you want to put it in zero so that the camera tracks the subject um, if it gets closer or farther away. For the AF area, I would actually recommend not using the whole area, but if I prefer to define as precisely as possible where I want to focus. And I don't want any kind of tracking or subject recognition for the moment. I will set you, tell you later how I set this up in my camera. The same goes for the eye detection. And then we're basically good here. The last item, focus mode, again, you will only see it on lenses that have autofocus, but don't have an AF MF switch on the lens. For the AF cases, I made quite good experiences with the AF case 1 and then fine-tuning the tracking sensitivity to minus 1, just that it sticks a bit more to the subject. But this might depend a bit what you photograph. I also change this sometimes for flying birds. Here everything that starts with one shot is not important for us right now. The preview AF really disabled this one because otherwise the camera is looking for focus and trying to focus all the time even without you touching it. It drains battery and it might cause you to miss a shot. The lens stripe and AF impossible is important for the large super tele lenses. I would really keep this on so that the camera basically keeps looking for a, for a subject or for something to focus even though even if it struggles for a moment. Um, since the R8 doesn't have a joystick, maybe you find it useful to enable the touch and drag autofocus where you can just uh, use part of your screen for moving the autofocus point. And if you want that it moves a bit quicker, you can increase the sensitivity here. You can also limit the autofocus areas so that you can toggle a bit faster between them. I made good experiences with not limiting this too much, otherwise I was sometimes in the field missing one of them, so I just deactivated the, these three, but this completely depends on your style of photography, what subjects you shoot and so on. 
I would highly recommend to activate the orientation linked autofocus points. So if you switch from um, horizontal shooting from landscape to portrait, that the autofocus point um, can be selected differently because you want, probably most likely will want to have it at a different position. Below you can even limit the subject the camera can detect and choose between the de detection of left and right. I will skip this for now. I usually activate the manual focus peaking settings. Um, these are only active if you're in manual focus, which doesn't happen very often for me, but I prefer to have them already activated in case I need them. And then um, here the electronic full-time MF I put on. So this is useful, for example, when the camera is stuck on the background, you want to, to move the focus closer, you can just quickly turn the lens, um, the focus ring on the lens and it will change. However, pay a bit attention if you use the camera on a beanbag, it might also be that you um, accidentally move the focus ring and of course this defocuses your subject again. Um, the lens electronic MF what it should do after one shot is not really so important for, for if we shoot in servo um, and the rest I also leave as it is. From here on it will be a bit quicker because in the playback menu I think it comes down to personal taste and it's not so important anymore because it's after the picture is done. However there are some things that can make life easier for example uh, the magnification, I like to put this as actual size, so it magnifies it quite a lot and that it should um, always go on the focusing point that it was active because this is most likely where you want to check the sharpness. I would also recommend putting the highlight alert on so that you can see visually which areas of the pictures are overexposed and you can quickly adjust the exposure for the next image if needed. The communication settings of how you can connect the camera to your tablet, smartphone or a computer I will skip. I will even put the camera in airplane mode to save some battery because I really don't use it. Um, then there's not much here in this setup or wrench uh, menu. I disable the beep of the camera because it's driving me crazy otherwise. Uh, the power of saving I also changed already a bit actually that I could even film this screen here. Um, I will put the screen dimmer to something a bit longer. I disabled the screen off completely or maybe put it to 30 minutes or something where it's not annoying you. If you are a bit tight on battery maybe do 10 but I think like the screen dimmer after 10 seconds every time I see this with a workshop client I almost want to change it for them because it's yeah after 10 seconds the screen is already so dim you cannot see anything this is a bit. For me not ideal and also the auto power off, I put it to 5 minutes or something. I think this looks quite good so far. Um, I will come back to the menu 5 here in a bit, but now we go to the custom functions. Um, here I will leave everything as it is. On the second one, the same exposure for new aperture, I am changing this for uh, ISO speed. So this means if you're working with a zoom lens, um, like my 100 to 500, let's say at uh, 100 millimeter I'm at f4.5 and then I zoom in to uh, let's say 400 millimeter I'm at f6.3 so I lost like a one stop of light and now the, in this mode the camera is automatically adjusting the ISO so that the picture is not getting too dark. This is only important if you shoot in manual mode um, but there I think it's, it is quite important. Um, Let's get to the next one. Here I kept the direction of the dials and the, which dial is doing what as it is. Maybe if you come from Nikon or Sony it might be nice to change that and it's more a camera like you're used to it. And an important one is here the customized buttons. So I like to have the AF on the shutter release button. I'm never using this rec mode for the movie because if I film, as I said, I use the dedicated switch on the left. So I change this one here um, for the optical viewfinder simulation. This is quite handy when I shoot backlit, so I can just toggle between the exposure simulation and the optical viewfinder simulation. The MFN, I actually changed that it uh, functions as the Q button, so for the quick menu. Um, Usually this is the set button, so the one in the middle of the, of the back of these four uh, keys or buttons. But I will reprogram that one in a minute, so this is why I need the Q button somewhere else. The AF on, this is quite an important one and the most used button probably on the back of my camera. Here I uh, 
put it to switch to registered autofocus function. So as you remembered, if I press the shutter, it just uses spot AF without tracking or anything. This is very precise, but not ideal if I want to track a bird in flight, for example. So here, if I press on info, I can set another set of autofocus uh, parameters that are really good for tracking birds. So here uh, I need to make a tick on the left for every setting that I want to like overwrite. So here I, for the autofocus area, I take a large zone. I want to have the servo tracking enabled in the whole picture. The subject to detect should be animals. If you shoot animals and people, maybe put it to automot automatic here, but I keep it on animals. Spot detection is not important for animals or not working. Eye detection, I also activate it and on automatic, I don't, have a, I don't know if it will be the left or the right one. The camera should decide which one is more, more visible. And then the tracking sensitivity, I also put it slightly down. And this is it for now as a general purpose setting. So now the nice thing is if I uh, just press the shutter button, I have spot autofocus without any tracking, so very precise. If I press the AF on, I can have the tracking which follows the subject, so I have the best out of both worlds. Um, the star button or the AE lock button, I never use it in manual mode, so I'm also assigning something else. And here I'm assigning the ISO because otherwise I cannot I don't have so far a method to set the ISO quickly because the camera only has two wheels, so only aperture and shutter speed, no ISO, so that's done now. Um, the AF point selection button I will leave, and here the different buttons to the left, right, up and down, I will put them to directly select the autofocus point. And the middle one, the set button, I will put to set AF point to center, meaning if I press this button, the autofocus point will come in the middle of the image, will be centered again in case it got somewhere lost. That's a quick way to reset it. The lens function button, um, so far I didn't assign anything to it because uh, not all of my lenses have it and I'm not really using it much actually. Um, and the same goes for the flash, so we're actually good here. I can go back with menu. Then I'm going to the dials. Here I leave the TV and AV um, dials. And the control ring on the, cam on the lens, I turn this off because I cannot put an important function anyway because not all of my lenses have it. And second, sometimes I touched it without wanting to, so I put this to off for now. Um, here, uh, release shutter without lens, I put it on on. You might wonder why this is useful. Well, I have uh, one manual focused lens that is not recognized by the camera and then I cannot take a picture if this is turned off. And I think this is it. I will skip the My menu for now if you're interested for this. There is another video that I linked in the video description where I explain the My menu and how I set it up. Now I have some nice settings. Um, if I go here on the inf press the info button a couple of times, this is maybe not an ideal starting point for bird photography. Maybe we want a shorter shutter speed and open the aperture a bit more. Let's say to the maximum. I mean, usually I don't have a 1.8 lens, but I didn't want to put the 600 here. So I just put it as open as possible. I put a shorter shutter speed and some ISO value that I might need to adjust later. So far, so good. I want to save this somewhere that I can always come back to these settings. And I can do this in the menu and then here in the fifth tab of the range. Here you have shooting, custom shooting mode C1, C2. I register this to C1. And now if I go to C1 on my mode dial, exactly these settings will be saved. If I change something there I and I turn the camera off and on again, it comes back to the original settings. Or if I change something, I go to A, V, M or whatever mode and I go back to C1, Again, it will revert to the original settings. I prefer if it keeps these changes, so I will auto-update settings here, enable. So this means as soon as I change something, it will like overwrite the C1 with these new um, settings. That's quite nice for bird photography, general wildlife photography. Now I want something more targeted for landscape or in general non-moving subjects. So there's a couple of things I want to change. I will just go for like, the shorter shutter speed, but I will check this later. For landscape, already a clo more closed aperture as a starting point and probably I will lower my ISO a bit. More important, maybe what are we changing in the menu? So let's go into the menu and start completely on the left. Um, I'm actually going for the normal row here because even if there's 
not much of a difference. Maybe there is ever so slightly of a difference. I'm not 100% sure. It might depend on the scene of how much you need to push the shadows in the in post. But in landscape, buffer is not an is issue and we're not taking thousands of pictures. So storage is also not a big issue for me. So I'm going to the full draw. Um, then if I go here to the next one, to the menu item six, seven, I will go with the drive mode to the low speed continuous, maybe even the uh, single shooting or like a two second timer. This really depends on the situation, but I don't want the high, high uh, the continuous shooting because it's not really needed for landscapes. And I will change the shutter mode from electronic to electronic first curtain, uh, mainly because this gives me a larger bit depth. Um, this is really only relevant at lower ISO, at ISO 1600 it doesn't matter, but as I said for landscapes I'm usually in this low ISO, so I have a bit more options there, and also I can have also longer exposures like 2, 3, 5 seconds, which is not a, um, an option with the electronic shutter. There's also a few changes in the autofocus um, settings. I want to put one shot now, I prefer to have a, the single point AF and not the spot AF because it's a bit easier. I will also not uh, track any subjects. So I think that's it for the settings. So we go to the range again and register this set of settings to the custom shooting mode too. And now if, you, if I go to C1, you will see I have my uh, set for bird pictures, C2, the one for landscapes. And this you might have seen before, it's always showing me this info screen uh, that I don't really like so much actually. So I will disable this as is in the uh, tab 2 of the wrench. I put mode guide to disable and now if I switch between C1 and C2 it's not popping up anymore. And now I'm quite sad if I change something like the aperture here, I go to C1 and then back to C2, you see it kept this setting. This is how I prefer to have my camera set up. Again, in general, um, this is quite personal. I hope this was somehow useful for you. If yes, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. And let me and other people know in the comments what are some settings that you think are very important to change, specifically on the R8. I hope there will be an interesting discussion and see you in the next video.